What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out endless amount of WWE wrestlers who have betrayed Rey Mysterio. Now, we all love Rey. Rey is near and dear to our hearts. He's always been like that, um, especially with the fans. We love his his lucha uh, libre style of wrestling, his his move set, his his uh, ring gear that he comes out to the ring in. But it seems as if Ray always finds himself getting betrayed by people that he trusts. We just seen it happen with his son not too long ago. We've seen it recently happen with uh, uh, Santos Escobar. Then it was uh, Carlito. Who's next that's going to portray Ray Mysterio, bro? When your own son is betraying you. Sad. It's just truly sad. So we're gonna check out some times wrestlers ended up portraying Ray. It's a few, it's a it's a list of them. It's a list. It's like that's part of his gimmick. Ray trusts you, brings you into the family, and then you betray him. Happens every time. Let's get right into this one. Should be a good one, man. Every wrestler to turn on Ray Mysterio. Poor be sure Ray. to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos poor, on WrestleMania XL. Ray. Eddie Guerrero. But the partnership between Rey Mysterio and Eddie Most Guerrero came more. just at the right time in WWE. Both men were in their prime and both men were insanely over with the audience. WWE decided that it was in everyone's best interest that instead of keeping them as a collective duo, they should be split and embark on a blood feud. At first, their matches had an element of sportsmanship as it was very much presented as two friends just wrestling to see who was the better man on that mm -hmm. particular day. However, when Mysterio won every major match in their yep. program, Guerrero became increasingly frustrated and eventually snapped and turned on his tag team partner. This was a bold move from WWE good, creative good at the movement. time as Guerrero was arguably the like, like good like like turn there. That was it was it was set up. Eddie couldn't get the win. And he was trying to be, you know, a good sportsman, good friendship, like it's all love only for him to finally get frustrated with not being able to beat Rey Mysterio and turns on him. Love it, love it, love it. Single most popular wrestler in the entire company, and to turn him heel could have had a detrimental effect but to the worked. product. Thankfully, Guerrero made it work, just like he did with everything throughout his legendary career. WWE decided to take the feud between the two in such an unexpected manner as the feud went in a dark direction which yeah. saw Guerrero reveal that he was the actual biological father of Dominic How things have <laughs> come full circle <laughs> Mysterio The two would then settle their feud in a custody of Dominic Mysterio in a ladder match Yeah, there were crazy times during that period Yeah, crazy I times I thought it might become too soap opera-ish Yeah For my personal taste but the great thing about it was the payoff. Mm -hmm. Payoff was that ladder match. My God in heaven. Eddie Guerrero <laughs> and Rey Mysterio in a ladder match. How do you beat that? Yeah. yeah how, where are you going to see that again? Right. And yeah. for, in, in a, in a, in a, what's the reason for that? this match? Well, it had a great reason. It had a wonderful stipulation everybody could understand. And it let two of the greatest workers in the world, in Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio, uh, go out there and do their thing. I, I, my sense is they let Eddie and Ray uh, write the music. Mm -hmm. The feud between Guerrero and Mysterio became one of the most memorable and celebrated rivalries of the Ruthless Aggression Era. And it's easy to true. see why fans still talk about moments and matches from the feud almost two decades after the feud came to a close. Chavo Guerrero. Chavo WrestleMania 22 was the crowning moment of Rey Mysterio's career, as he would finally become a- I definitely remember that feud too. That was, that was an interesting one. Chavo, uh, I wanna say, I'm not sure what situation. I'm not sure if it was on a SmackDown or a pay-per-view. If you guys remember, like Ray was stuck on like the top rope or something like that, and Chavo just destroyed his knee, like just destroyed it with a steel chair. And he was like kind of sidelined for a little bit. I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna talk about it because that was, bruh, bruh. I I hated Chavo for that shit, bro. Like, how you gonna do that to 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 your homie, man? To your, he damn near family to you. How you gonna do that to to Ray like that? Destroyed his knee, and then Ray came back and did the same thing to uh to Chavo Guerrero. Um, like I said, I'm, I could be getting exactly how it went wrong, but that was the premise of it. Each other, they were trying to destroy. Their knee would be caught in something, and they would try to destroy the other person's knee with a steel chair. 
but world champion. Mysterio's reign wasn't exactly great, as Vince McMahon clearly resented the fact that Mysterio was world champion. Uh -huh. Mysterio often lost clean on TV, and there was a major credibility issue with his reign. Mysterio's world title reign came to an end at the Great American Bash pay-per-view in 2006, as Mysterio would drop the title to King Booker after Chavo Guerrero bashed Mysterio over the head with a steel chair. Mysterio and Guerrero were presented as on-screen friends, mm -hmm. yet it was apparent from the fans' perspective that Guerrero was plotting his heel turn. Mm -hmm. As for why Guerrero turned on Mysterio, Guerrero would claim in a promo that Mysterio had used the late great Eddie Guerrero's name to succeed, and Mysterio had tarnished Eddie's memory. I mean, look, I've said it before, and, and Vince 100% believes this, just like Jerry Jarrett, that the, the Jeff Jarrett's father. Yeah. Real issues create real money. Mm. And mm. when, th this is nothing that I didn't do in 2007. It was the same thing. You're, you want to be a Guerrero, you're not, you'll never be a Guerrero, you're jealous of us, that whole thing. And people just latched onto it. The feud between the two was mostly decent, yet Guerrero was. And that was the crazy thing about this, hearing, hearing it years later, that's how he, he felt. And they turned some real life feelings into a angle and toy story i didn't never i never knew that until you know recently when he came out talking about that that's how he feels about ray like you just used his name to get to where you at and i don't know man that's this i don't know if they've reconciled so y'all let me know if y'all have seen anything with them reconciling things but i'm not sure if they have though was an atmosterious level and once the feud was over guerrero would be moved dramatically down the card as wwe evidently didn't think he had what it took to be an upper card talent mm -hmm. vicky guerrero the things went from bad to worse in 2006 yep. for rey mysterio as after chava guerrero had turned on him vicky guerrero also turned her back on him and mm -hmm. hit him with a steel chair this was the time period in which vicky was becoming a permanent on-screen character and this was a smart way to get fans to absolutely hate her and it worked although she did that later on on her own Vicky did great in her role, as despite having a limited TV experience, she was a natural at obtaining heat, and she yeah. had an incredible run in the company, managing names such as Edge and Dolph Ziggler, and of course, being the on-air authority figures for both Raw and SmackDown. By God, when she first cut the heel promo on me backstage, and she would come up with sh** that she could do as a heel, I went, she's a heel. Vicky's a natural heel. She, she was absolutely a natural she's a guerrero by marriage mm -hmm. and so by default she lived the business man batista this was in a 2009 good one. WWE. this was a really good one bro oh my god bro this was so good ah such a good moment where once again ray trusts someone they're friends and he snapped and it worked Oh, this is so good, man. <laughs> we decided it was time to turn Batista heel for the first time since 2005. Mm -hmm. To make this heel turn work, WWE were going to have Batista turn on his on-screen tag team partner, yep. Rey Mysterio. It's worth noting that Mysterio and Batista had unbelievable chemistry as a tag team. And it was truly heartbreaking to see Batista That's disintegrate the team. The heel turn took place following a world title match at the Bragging Rights pay-per-view. Batista cut a promo directly to Mysterio and he stated oh that Mysterio was supposed to be his friend. Batista then absolutely annihilated Mysterio to the utter horror of the fans. And it worked. Batista would claim that Mysterio cost him the world title in the Fatal 4-Way world title match. And in Batista's defense, Mysterio did. But it was a world title match where everybody was doing whatever mm -hmm. it took to win. The two were then feud for the rest of 2009 following the bragging rights pay-per-view event. And the heel turn and the babyface work of Mysterio allowed Batista to be instantly accepted as a new top heel in the company. And once again... Ray is such like a the ultimate baby face that when people turn on him, the person that turns on him get instant nuclear heat. Dominic, he's the prime example. He instantly got nuclear heat because he turned on his own dad. We knew it was coming, but just to see it happen, it. it Raise the he's the perfect guy <laughs> to to betray because you're if you want to get real heel heat and you you're cool with this person and Ray brings you in, just betray him. Just hit him back with a steel chair and people are gonna hate you because that's how much people love Ray. Company <laughs> Dominic Mysterio. Throughout 2002, WWE were planting the seeds that Dominic Mysterio could potentially turn on his father. 
This was built over time, and when it finally happened at the Clash at the Castle event in Cardiff, Wales, it was an incredibly satisfying moment. Yep. Dominic began to deliver the finest work of his entire career mm -hmm. as he was born to be a heel, and the feud between the father and son duo lasted several months, with WWE teasing an eventual showdown between the two. The match eventually went down at WrestleMania White 39, and it delivered perfectly. everything fans could have wanted out of the matchup. He's about 190, so it was just... It was very hard for him at the beginning to try to adapt and find his role as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, the comparisons were, they were made. And of course he couldn't uh, live up to him. Yeah. Not until we separated and he continued on his own path without having his dad by his side. And that was the best thing that could have ever happened to him. And it worked, bro. Still got to get a little bit better in the ring. It's going to take some time, but it worked because people hate him. And what they're doing with him, potentially with Liv Morgan, is very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, I like what they... This was the best thing for Dominic. Turn him heel, go against his dad. He's the... He still, he still gets that much booze, bro. People just hate him, and it works. Ultimately, the Dominic heel turn from 2022 resulted in one of the best character transformations in WWE history. Yep. And both Dominic and his father deserve all the credit in the world for making this feud work. Santos Escobar WWE had a grand vision for Santos Escobar as a heel on SmackDown. And to achieve this heel turn, WWE booked Escobar to, surprise, surprise, mm -hmm. turn on his tag team yep. partner, Rey Mysterio. <laughs> the two were part of the LWO faction, and Escobar would attack Mysterio and take him out of action. Whilst it looked like the two were going to face off in a singles match at WrestleMania 40, the match would end up being a tag match as Mysterio would team with Andrade to take on Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. And finally, Carlito. Go, Carlito on the final name today yep. to turn on WWE today. Hall of Famer <laughs> was Carlito. This took place in April of 2024 as it was revealed that Carlito was the one behind the attack on Dragon Lee. Whilst Poor Carlito Ray. is better suited in a heel role, of it has course. become an ongoing joke and now basically a meme that everyone turns on Rey Mysterio. Yep. This particular turn was incredibly predictable and WWE need to book these styles of angles with more suspense. But they have it, folks. Yeah, we every wrestler. A lot of people could tell. Oh, it was definitely Carlito. The way they were planting the seeds and stuff. Yep, Carlito's next, and he turned on him. So, are we surprised? No. <laughs> Is it entertaining? Yes. Do we feel bad for Ray? Yes. <laughs> Poor Ray. Hey, comment down below. Let me know what was the the heel turn that really got you the most when it came to. Someone turning on Rey Mysterio. What was the heel turn that really hit you? Like, damn, this one. This is tough. No, for me, I think it may have to be the Batista one because of the chemistry and how they worked well together in the ring and just how he set it up. He's like, you know, like, it seems so endearing. And then he, he tried to murder him. Legitimately tried to murder him. So that one hit. The Dominic one, you kind of knew it needed to happen and it worked perfectly. Santos it wasn't anything too special. And the Carlito one, we kind of saw that a mile away. You could say the Eddie Guerrero one, that one definitely for a lot of people was would be the, the top one because of, you know, just their chemistry and their relationship, you know, storyline wise. But the BT season one definitely hit me probably the most because it was just like, this is such a good parent. And then, ah, oh, we hadn't seen Batista be like a heel like that in a long time. So, but y'all comment down below. Let me know um, who y'all feel like had the best heel turn on Rey Mysterio. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K, and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.